Okay, guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield Champion League 2022 highlights. These are my highlights from playing the game. Yes, I have been playing the game, if anyone was wondering. Check out my character. You like that drip? I know you do. Alright, so during the course of this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how the meta was and the challenges I faced while I was playing. Now, I prepared my team, but what I expected to be on the other side of that arena was not what happened. Okay, so for example, a lot of people were using a sleep technique, like they were using like hypnosis and things like that. I was not planning on that. Like I joked with my friend saying like, oh yeah, if they have that, that's probably gonna destroy my team. Sure enough, that did destroy me in some matches. So Oscar, if you're watching this video, you were right. Sleep was really gonna destroy my team. So I gotta prepare for that next time if I enter a tournament. Be careful on those sleepers, all right? Because they will destroy your team if you're not prepared for it. The other thing I wanted to say is, as far as the meta, there were Pokemon that came up a lot. Like, it was very common to see. I'll give you an example. Cinderace was very common to see on someone's team. Um, Gardevoir, yes. Every time I saw a Gardevoir, I pretty much knew I was going to lose because she was going to put me to sleep and then destroy my team. Um, I also saw a lot of Tyranitar. Haxorus, um, Garchomp, I saw a lot of those while, while I was playing. Yeah. A lot of people like to run dragons. I thought that was pretty interesting. There was a lot of dragons, a lot of dragons. They even had Dragonite, which I thought was kind of, it kind of tripped me out because I was like, why would you run Dragonite? But anyway, I, I know he's good, but just the fact that he has double ice weakness, but then again, the same thing with Garchomp. So I guess they were trying to dodge the ground attacks, and he's not slow, so... Yeah, I'm not knocking the Dragonite. I'm not going to knock the Dragonite, yeah. It, it's one of my favorite designs anyway. So, yeah, as you can see from these videos, um, one, of the, one of the key Pokemon that helped me a ton was my Lapras. I made that thing like a freaking tank. And if I could go back, I would still change some stuff because I see how I could have made it even better than it was. So, shout out to my Lapras for helping me win these matches. Yeah, okay, so... So for as far as the Cinderace, a lot of people use Cinderace's hidden ability, which helped out a lot. Like you'd think even with the drawback of him changing to a different type and then somebody might utilize that against you, that did not come up as much as you might think. So if you're running Cinderace with his hidden ability, yeah, that's a lot better than you think it might be, especially if you're using Life Orb. That was devastating when I was watching these matches. Life Orb Cinderace is super powerful, like offensively, insanely powerful offensively. Another thing that came up that I didn't expect was people were using Weakness Policy Venusaur. I saw that too. That was pretty interesting. Weakness Policy Venusaur is pretty good. Okay, Aegislass was pretty good in here. I was not counting on Aegislass. I should have expected it because people have complained about Aegislass being pretty much broken. I should have expected more Aegislass. But I was not prepared for enough ages last. I mean, I beat one, but it it was not an easy it was not an easy win. And then another thing I did not count on is the times where like the RNG worked against me more often than I thought. I think somebody even dodged the move that had a hundred percent accuracy, which I thought was really strange because I thought whenever you do ranked battles, the little extra heart stuff like Pokemon Friendship, I thought that doesn't play a role, but maybe it does. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, another thing that I saw a few times, I saw Cloyster a few times in the meta. Yeah. And you already know, if you see Cloyster, most likely they're going to hit you with the skill link. They're going to try to use, like, the Rock Blast or, like, the Icicle Spare, like, five times strikes. Which, the way one of the, my opponents used it was very smart. I liked how they did that. They, they were trying to make their Cloyster be a sweeper. I'm not sure if this is already a common tactic. I'm kind of... When it comes to this game... I didn't know that much about the competitive scene. I've seen a few matches, but I didn't I didn't see it like this cuz normally when I played in the past it wasn't like this to where like we're using different pokemon than I'm used to. Okay, Lucario was another thorn in my flesh, but he didn't pop up as much as you might think. He he wasn't that much of a pop up. Another one that was really difficult, another steel type that was difficult to work around was Metagross. I was not prepared for Metagross. Things I would have changed Things I would have changed would have definitely been like have more fire moves because I feel like if I had more fire moves on my Pokemon like Flamethrower and Fire Punch, I think that would have helped me a ton, a ton. 
And then if I would have ran with probably Hypnosis on Dragapult instead of Thunder Wave, I think that would have also helped. If anyone's paying attention, like I always, always try to keep my audience in mind. I always try to keep my audience in mind. Like I am really disgusted whenever people make like a whole um, 10 minute video and they don't give you any real information. There'll be like 30 seconds of information that you actually wanted from their clickbait title. But I try my best not to do that. If you're watching one of my videos, you probably already picked up on this. If I show you something in the title, I'm going to try my best to make it relevant. Not to just be like, oh, you watch my video. Because I don't want people watching my video and it's like, why am I watching this? I want to actually give you information. And by the way, if you actually don't like my commentary over this and you just wanted to see some of the highlights from like what was going on, you can mute my audio. I'm not going to trip over that. You can mute my audio if my audio is like bothering you. If you just wanted to watch the matches, go ahead and mute me. It's fine. Okay, um, another thing I'll say, Inteleon, he did not pop up that much. Blastoise popped up, but I think I only faced like one or two. Yeah, Blastoise popped up. Charizard popped up a few times. But as far as the ones that popped up the most, I would say um, Garchomp, Haxorus, Cinderace, and Gardevoir. I think those four popped up like almost everybody had something like that on their team. I was probably the only person who didn't. But the way they used them was smart, so I can't even knock them for u utilizing them like that. The way they used them was very intelligent. And then, one of the things that made me the most frustrated whenever I was playing, they were matches. I kid you not. They were matches that I lost by one turn. I literally lost some of these matches by one turn. A loss is a loss. I'm not going to trip. They outplayed me. But boy, did that hurt. One turn. I could have had a win. One turn difference. So as far as my team, who came in handy and who did I not use as much as I thought I might, I had Seismitoad on my team, but I really didn't use him that often during matches because he... He wouldn't have been very helpful in, against the opponents that I was facing, so I didn't use him that much. Um, who did I use the most? I would say um, Togekiss I used the most. Lapras I used the most. Charizard I used the most. All three of them came in super handy a lot of times. Dragapult also came in handy a few times. So those four, I guess. On my team, out of the six I had, those four came in the most handy. Tyranitar also came in handy too occasionally. Yeah, I pretty much used everybody on my team except for Seismitoad. Like, every once in a while I would use him, but he really wasn't, like, that much of a game changer for me. I should have ran with somebody else. Another thing I will say to try to be helpful to my audience. If you're participating in this tournament right now, I would highly advise you to go for special attackers. If you got some on your team, utilize them. Utilize your special attackers because what I've noticed is most people are focusing on physical attackers either They're doing it or they're using moves like me using charm to like decrease physical attack because a lot of these matches That's what we're dealing with a lot of physical attackers So if you have special attackers utilize them because I utilize my Lapras I utilize my Charizard and both of them helped me big time as you can tell, I'm definitely into this franchise. I'm definitely into the Pokemon franchise, the Monster Tamer franchise. Yes, I'm a big fan of the Monster Tamer franchise, and Pokemon happens to be the headliner. All right, what else should I bring up? I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to give you guys some helpful information. Let's see, let's see. If you're facing Aegislash, keep in mind that they'll try to use um, their King Shield move a lot. So try to like guess whenever they're going to go for that and use it to your advantage. That's one tip I'll give people. All right. If you find yourself facing a Cinderace and you have the advantage because of the type of Pokemon you have, all right, I would keep in mind that he might use a U-turn on you. So just expect what he's going to switch to. And keep in mind that a lot of people running Cinderace, they're going to have a flying attack, probably from bounce, and they're going to have a fighting attack, either like a low kick or a close combat or something. Yeah. Or a high jump kick. I saw somebody run a high jump kick on me, and I was really annoyed because that's a risky move. And both times that they used it, they did not fall and hurt themselves. Okay, I hate, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, I hate when people use risky moves like high jump kick, and it never, during the whole match, it never works against them. They're not even running like a wide lens to increase their accuracy. No, it, it this doesn't land against them. But the reason I'm salty about that is because a lot of times where I've tried to run a high jump kick, it's burned me bad. So that that's why I'm salty when it doesn't happen to other people as often. No, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably going to get called a hater for that one, but it's fine. It's fine. 
That's why I don't use high jump kick. That is exactly why I don't use high jump kick. Yeah, I think even in some of the highlights, I might have made like one or two mistakes. I can't remember right now. But yeah, if somebody's paying attention, they probably caught some mistakes I made. Because like whenever I'm doing this, I was getting nervous because I was like trying to win the best I could, trying to like predict what moves they're going to make. And another thing I should point out, some things that helped me while I was playing this is I wasn't just looking for an immediate win within like each Pokemon versus Pokemon. I was looking for the long game. So sometimes I would do moves that wouldn't like immediately give me the victory, but I'm thinking about like I have other Pokemon and they have other Pokemon. So I'm trying to make these moves to where it's going to give them a harder time in the long end. Like that's why I was trying to paralyze them. That's why I was trying to like lower their attack power and stuff. I was utilizing those moves that way it would help me secure the victory in the long game. Chess, not checkers. There's people who know this too, and they're way better at this than me. I'm not even going to deny that for a second. I can't. Another problem I noticed whenever I used my team in this was that I tried to have a lot of my Pokemon be, um, what's it called? Um, be kind of like all rounders. I tried not to have them be like just attack and destroy because I know that that's messed people up in the past. But I will say, had I been more aggressive, that might have also helped. That might have also helped. Had I been a little bit more aggressive with my um, team building, that probably would have helped. Because I've noticed that worked for other people. I just didn't know what type of stuff they were going to be running. I thought more people were going to use Spirit Tomb, but that didn't happen as often as I thought. As far as types that popped up a lot, a lot of the types that popped up were dragons popped up a lot and um, water types popped up a lot fire types popped up a lot grass did not actually show up as often as i thought it might that was surprising to me yeah but steel dragon water and fire those steel dragon water those four types showed up the most whenever i was playing in this meta yeah those four types that's right steel water dragon and fire something that i thought was really cool was that a lot of people utilize the weakness policy very well if they had a pokemon that had a lot of weaknesses they slapped that weakness policy on them and one thing that i will say i was happy that like during the course of this competition i didn't really face anybody that felt like um what's it called like a, a cheap win like i'm going against somebody who's completely incompetent i feel like all of the people that i faced they knew what they were doing. They weren't like, oh, I'd never played this game before. Like, I feel like all everyone, not even one person was like, I would say was a bad player. I felt like everyone had some sort of good strategy. It might not have been the best. Mine wasn't even the best. But um, I felt like every player held their own. Like, they have my respect. I will honestly say that. There was no player that I'm like, this person is trash. Like, there was no player like that while I was playing. Shout out to the players who appeared in this video. I respect each and every one of you. I will say that. I'm not going to talk trash about anybody. They all played well. They all worked hard, came up with strategies, and they all played well. Nobody used a technique on me that I was like, oh, this is extremely petty. Like, this is low ball type stuff. Yeah. And I also hope nobody thinks that I used a strategy that was really petty or low ball. I don't think I did, as far as I remember. I feel like all the techniques I used were my desperate attempts to survive in the match and make sure I secured the victory, which I did in these four highlights. Once again, shout out to my friend Oscar, who was helping coaching me during the course of this. Like before, like not during the matches, Oscar was helping coach me prepare for the matches. That's how I kind of knew once I went against a sleeper style fighter that I was in for some trouble. Worst thing was, the very first person that I played, we were joking about it, we were joking about it, we were joking about it at work, the very first person I ended up playing during the course of like this tournament thing was the fact that they were a sleeper. The very first person I played was a sleeper style player. They had a Gardevoir at the beginning and they put me to sleep and I was furious. I was like, oh my goodness, what are the odds that the very first person I play is using this sleeper style? But now I have a lot more respect for the sleeper style combat, okay? People who like to run sleep attacks, I have a much higher respect for it. Because I thought it was too risky to run it that way. But after this tournament, I realized I'm probably going to say that's probably the best status condition like to use against your opponent. And then I would say burn. And then I would say paralyze. 
and then fourth i would put toxic and the reason why i make this statement why i think like these are the best styles okay like, one if you manage to put somebody to sleep and they're not prepared for that they have no sleep talk and they have no ability to block that oh they're in for a world of hurt because you can just set up so easily on them and you can just just chop them down like a butter knife cutting straight through them this the reason why i would put burn as second right is because burn you're getting damage over time and it's lowering your attack and your special attack so there's that paralyze it slows you down but it does not guarantee that it will stop you from attacking in fact a lot of times when I use the um, the paralyze, it did not work as often as I had hoped against my opponent. They were paralyzed, but they would just attack me like it was nothing. Okay, so that's why I would rank. Oh, and lastly, poison. I'd put poison last because it doesn't slow them down. Their attack force is not weaker. Their defense is not weaker. And then the only poison that's really good is like toxic, like badly poisoned. That's the only one I would say that's really good. And it's still I would put it fourth. That's just my personal opinion. When it comes to status conditions, I would put sleep condition as the strongest, second burn, third paralyze, and then last poison. Confusion, I that's more random. I would not even put that in the category. If you if you like to run confusion on people, that's that's perfectly fine. You're probably like awesome at it, but I, I don't really go for that. Another thing I will say, I don't think there was any Pokemon that I went against that I was like, I used to think this Pokemon was bad, but now I understand it's really good. Like, I feel like all of the Pokemon I went against, I already knew they were capable of really amazing things. That's what I honestly feel. Some of the moves that I utilized while I was playing this were um, breaking swipe to lower their attack power. Plus it was a dragon move. I was actually expecting a lot of dragons to show up, but then when it actually happened, it still surprised me. Another move that helped me a lot was freeze dry because like it's an ice move that can also be used against water type so both of those two moves helped me out a ton while i was playing this charm helped me out charm saved me from a lot of beatings that move is good that move is really good thunder wave definitely helped while i was playing this game i think i think those were the main ones that helped a ton wildfire flames charizard g max charizard wildfire flames that did help if anyone's disappointed that i didn't use the pokemon music I'm sorry, I didn't know how much you liked it. I will say I was happy that I didn't come across a lot of opponents who just tried to Dynamax at the beginning of the match, which would have been really weird because, like, I, I don't know, I don't know. But I'm just glad. I'm glad that I did not come across a bunch of people who Dynamax at the beginning of the match because it almost comes off as desperate when you do that. I might have done that, but I was desperate if I did do that at the very beginning of the match. Oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, I came across Melodic. Yeah, I'm not sure if I said this already, but I came across Melodic a few times. Which is kind of a smart choice to use Melodic. A special attacker, and it's a water type, solid water type, so yeah. And I and I can't remember what the ability is, but I remember, I remember Melodic had a very helpful ability too. I saw one person utilize White Herb with their Blastoise and a Shell Smash. I felt like that was a good technique. Because it... It stopped them from losing the downside, but they still had the positive side. So I was like, I didn't even know you could do that, but I learned a new move that way. Some of the things I probably would have changed. In all honesty, if I could have gone back and done this again, I would have went with two dragons at least and not Dragapult. I probably would have went with two different dragons, like had I known how things were going to play out. I also probably would have utilized Metagross because I thought it was slower than it actually was. And I also didn't know Metagross could know Bullet Punch. So both of those two things are pretty good. One of the main things I would have changed if I went back and redid this, like a Time Traveler, I would have had Gardevoir on my team and I would have went with a Hypnosis because that was so effective over the course of these matches. That was so crazy effective. Gardevoir is Psychic and Fairy. That's an insanely good type combination, especially in this meta that I was dealing with right here. Basically, if they didn't have Steel, and most of them did not have any poison jab. You were probably you were probably pretty good. There wasn't much bug moves. There was not that many bug moves at all in this. There were Pokemon that were eligible for this tournament that I expected to see, but they like never showed up. I think I only saw Sk Skarmory like one time. I think only one time I saw Skarmory. I expected to see Skarmory a lot more. I was surprised that I didn't see um Gyarados use Thunder Fang. That surprised me. It was not as common as I thought it was going to be. There was a lot of G-Max, 
Yeah, there was a lot of Gigantamax. Not regular Dynamax. There was a lot of Gigantamax. I used it. Other people used it. A lot. Pretty much everybody I faced, most of them used a Gigantamax. They didn't use like a regular um, Dynamax. It happened occasionally, but most of the time it was uh, Gigantamax. Because they were utilizing those Gigantamax um, exclusive moves. Which is smart. It's a smart thing to do at the end of the day. Another thing I probably would have changed is with my Lapras, I would not have went with Whirlpool. Had I known how things were going to be, I would have used a different move than Whirlpool. This video is wrapping up, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to be like entertaining. I tried to be myself. I also tried to give you guys some tips and some helpful information. I hope this was helpful, and I hope people can see that I actually care about my audience, and I'm trying to help my fellow gamers out there. I'm not trying to give you some 10-minute video with only 30 seconds of information. Yeah, I brought that up again because that's really annoying. Whoever is doing that, I'm not going to say your name. I'm not, you're very popular. I'm not going to say your name because I don't want to get like destroyed by your army of fans. But please, I know there's people out there who see it too. Please, guys, please. They need to stop that. That's really horrible. Like You're being like a predator to your audience. That's really horrible. You're giving somebody like, watch this 10-minute video. Somewhere in the mix, I'm going to give you 30 seconds of the information that you actually want. Yeah. That's just horrible. And please, like, please, you guys watch my videos. I hopefully plan on never doing that to any of you. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it.